Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's Twit Special coverage of the Google Chrome OS announcement, episode 53, recorded December 7th, 2010. Chrome OS pilot program coming at you. We are bringing you live coverage of the world's most important tech news as it happens. Hopefully today counts. It's the uh, announcement about Chrome from Google. We don't know what it's going to be. Unless you're watching this on the rerun, then you already know. But uh, the speculation is it could be a Google Chrome netbook. It could be a Google Chrome OS release. Or it could just be the Google Chrome browser store. Or it could be one or both or all of those things. Uh, we're about to find out. Our breaking news coverage is brought to you here on Twit by Slingbox. Whenever you come across a breaking news item in tech and you want to understand it, go to twitlive.tv. To follow the story and get the latest tech from our experts, use Slingbox to watch your favorite TV shows when you're away from home. To learn more, check out Slingbox at a Best Buy near you or at slingbox.com slash twit. And we are gay. we've got the stream up. They're just showing ads for Chrome browser right now. Don't know if that's a tip-off that we're only going to get the, uh, the Chrome browser store today. But uh, they're just showing a bunch of Legos turning into a Chrome logo right now. It's beautiful. Uh, they say they're going to start pretty soon, though. So uh, keep an eye on the uh, on the blogs. We'll keep an eye on the stream. And uh, we'll keep an eye on the chat room. You guys let me know what you think of this as we go along. Here we go. A couple of very quick housekeeping things before we begin. Housekeeping Gabriel Stricker. And uh, for those of you who are here, if you're having any problems uh, just using the Wi-Fi, please just raise your hand and someone will come over and help you. I actually do see a handful Instead of, of asking so everyone to turn off their MiFi's, and someone will uh, come over and do some They're actually providing the assistance. For those of you who are tuning in via our live stream, we're going to be having a Q&A at the end of today's program. And if you have questions, please email them to us. Uh, the Q&A is scheduled for 11.45. Now on the Twit broadcast, we're probably going to duck Chrome out before that starts because we do have Mac Break Weekly coming. It's supposed to start at 11.30. They've been kind enough. Uh, to let us go over them a little bit. Uh, it depends. We'll see if the, if this uh, if this announcement gets over quick. We'll we'll go over to Mac Break Weekly quick. Mr. Sundar Pichai, thank you. All right, here we go. Thank you all for coming. Uh, really appreciate your time. Last event we had this event about a year ago. Uh, we had it back in Mountain View. And I know a lot of you had difficulty getting there in the morning. This so is a VP of Product to Management, Sundar Pichai. So hopefully it's, uh, it was a bit easy for uh, most of you. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. Uh, there are three main areas we're going to co uh, cover today. First is Chrome. Uh, we launched Chrome about two years ago. So we want to give an update on where we are today and give you a preview of some of the upcoming features in Chrome. The second area we want to talk about is Chrome Web Store. About six months ago, at Google I.O., we had announced details of the Web Store, and we've made a lot of progress since then, and so we want to give you an update on the Web Store. The third area where we will focus most of our time today is Chrome OS. A year ago, we announced the open source project behind Chrome OS, so two and three we've been so working far. with the community and partners to make a lot of progress. So we want to share you some exciting news there as well. Mostly so about let's the Chrome get started. OS. But we will get the, the Chrome Web Store. Chrome. Whether we'll see a device uh, we or not, that'll Chrome, be the, the last shoe to drop. The fundamental insight for us behind Chrome was recognizing that the web had shifted from documents, simple text pages, to rich interactive applications, what we now call as the Ajax Web 2.0 revolution. It was a pretty profound shift. It's really a revolution. And most browsers were built for the era of simple web pages. So we actually thought of Chrome almost as a modern operating system for web applications. We brought in principles of modern operating systems into the world of browsers. And we focused on three main things, speed, simplicity, and security. They have been pushing uh, Chrome as a platform since the very areas, beginning. What are we That's doing true. now? But let's, let's first recap as to where we are in terms of our users. The last number we announced was during Google I.O. six months ago. 
we had reached 70 million active users. We are on this graph. We're very, very conservative in, we how, in how we count users in just Chrome. just drew that freehand. These are primary users who use Chrome as their day-to-day -day browser. In the six months since Google I.O., we've had tremendous growth, and we are very excited to announce that we are at 120 million users today. That's true. Google if Chrome you, uh, as a browser you, is, uh, is the fastest growing it, browser right now. This growth is global in nature. Uh, we have growth in every country. While we expect North America and Europe, uh, Western Europe, etc., which is obvious, we have had a lot of traction in emerging markets as well. In fact, there are several countries, Philippines, India, Albania, uh, etc., where we are close to one in four, and in some cases we are approaching one in three internet users are using Chrome. I see we're following the and typical if you look presentation at leading secrets tech blogs, by starting uh, with numbers. We, we look at them as a leading indicator of where the rest of the broader population is moving. There are several blogs, including TechMeme, Tech, TechCrunch, etc., which have reported Chrome is their leading browser. Again, 120 million users. It actually represents a 300% growth since January of this year. So what is driving this growth? The single most common piece of feedback we get from our users, the single most common piece of feedback is that Chrome is fast. So speed has been our biggest focus since day one, and we have a lot more features coming ahead. Speed is not something which you can just layer on in the product. It's not a feature here or there. It's a feature which is pervasive. We thought about it from the day one, from the time you click on the icon, to everything you do in the browser. And so it's built in all through the browser. To give you a sense of some of our exciting upcoming features in Chrome, I want to invite you our lead character in Chrome comic book, as well as our director of product management, Brian Rakowski the famous creator of the Chrome comic book. That was a good comic book. That was a great way to introduce uh, Chrome. Thanks, Sundar. And like Sundar said, we're all about speed. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that we're doing on the Chrome team to make Chrome much, much faster. Uh, speed is a multifaceted problem. There's a lot of things we're working on. Now, they are talking about Chrome couple. OS. Now, you might have noticed a couple of months ago, we launched Instant on the Google homepage. And it helps you get to your search results right much, now they're much talking faster. about the Chrome browser. So we were, of course, very excited confusing. about that in Chrome. We wanted to get the same benefits from the Chrome Omnibox. So just to refresh your memory, I'll show you how Instant works in the Google search box on the homepage by doing a query for my very favorite food, spaghetti tacos. And we're going to rehash some stuff that they've and already as announced. As you can see, before I've even finished typing, before I've hit enter, the results are showing in line in the page. It's a really nice experience. And you can see why it got us so excited and why we wanted to get the same experience in Chrome with Omnibox. So I'll show you the exact same query in the Omnibox. This is what our team's been working on for a little while. And as you can see, same experience. Really fast to get your search results. Uh, really good, slick experience. So that's one, one part of the equation. But so they're just going know, to the rehash Omnibox the things more, that they've done in Chrome Browser up results. till now. I'm interested how they translate this into Chrome OS, because he did to. indicate that this was going to mostly be Directly. an announcement so about Chrome OS. In my case, I tend, I'm a big sports fan. I tend to go to ESPN a lot. And the browser has learned that that's one of the URLs that I'm going to when I type ESPN. So with Instant in the Omnibox, it gets even faster. Rather than having to select from a list of suggestions and then uh, commit the result and load the page, all I have to do is type a single letter and the page loads. So I'll show you what that means. I'll type an E for ESPN, and the page is already loaded. I didn't have to hit enter. I didn't have to finish the query. It's pretty nice. I don't um, know what spaghetti tacos are for those asking There's in the chat. There's lots of other room. pages that I go to a lot. I tend to check what my friends are doing on Twitter a lot. Type a T for Twitter. And you can see the page loads instantly. I go check the news on CNN. C for CNN. And the page is there right away. So it's a really great experience. We're very excited about this. Uh, in case you missed it, I'll do it one more time. E Please. for ESPN. T for Twitter. C for CNN. E. It's pretty fun. T. <laughs> C. So that's instant in the Omnibox. We want to make getting to your pages as quickly as, uh, as, quickly as possible, the way Chrome works. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you was, was about making different types of content very fast. So one of the most important types of content on the web is PDF. Romeister says the spaghetti tacos are a reference to the Nickelodeon the show iCarly. The we've been focusing on is wondering. making it really, really fast. So I'll show you what it looks like by doing a search for my very favorite PDF on the web. The Chrome comic book. You have a favorite PDF? Oh, of course. He's the maker of the Chrome comic book, so he has a favorite PDF. 
and don't be distracted by the dashing characters in this comic book, I will click on this link and you can instead focus on the speed of the PDF reader. Ready? Click. And it's, it's already there. We get it. Um, it's fast. It's pretty nice. But in, in fairness, it's only a 20 or 30 page PDF. So I want to show you something that's a little bit tougher. I've bookmarked uh, IRS perhaps forms? more important but less interesting PDF, the health care reform bill. Mm -hmm. And I'll give it a click. It's actually 1,990 pages of PDF. And ready? Click. It's already there. Uh, and you can see the whole thing in all its glory. You can scroll down. You can even see it's 1,990 pages. So that's PDF Reader in Chrome. Very, very fast. Makes loading PDFs a breeze. Uh, and, and we're really excited about what we've got there. So far, the summary of this announcement now, is not terribly exciting. Now, another type of content that we want to make faster is graphical content on Fast the web. PDFs. And our team has been working very hard on hardware acceleration. And just to make sure we're all on the same page, when I talk about hardware acceleration, I'm talking about offloading as much of the work and rendering graphical content to the GPU uh, from the CPU as possible. Now, the GPU is a second processor on your computer, specifically designed for rendering graphical content. Historically, GPUs, uh, graphical content on the web, the only content you could offload to the GPU has been stuff like transitions and animations and things like that, uh, which are very nice and makes for much more interactive websites. But we've also been adding some APIs to the web platform that allow you to do real rich 3D immersive scenes in the browser. So I'll show you an example of that. The technology that we're using for this is called WebGL. Now this is cool. And this is a demo of a little aquarium. And as it loads, you'll see there'll be a bunch of fish swimming around. A lot of browser area, makers uh, are, are working loaded. on incorporating WebGL. And WebGL in. is doing all the work to make sure we keep track of the lighting, and it's really the shadows, impressive. which fish is in front of the other fish, and all the different layers that. It's the kind of uh, stuff that VRML was supposed to do way back in the uh, fish, early part the of the decade. It gets there's more work to do, and all this is being offloaded to the GPU, and that's why it can be so responsive, and the f path of the fish can be so smooth. You do have to have a page that takes advantage of WebGL to notice view, it. And you'll see that it's actually a spherical aquarium. You can see the light reflecting off the sides of the tank, and the walls reflecting off the sides. Uh, it's a pretty complicated scene from a graphics perspective, and you can see there's some sharks in there. And if I unveil my secret feature, you can see lasers shooting out of the shark's eyes. And the lasers will actually refract as they come around the bend off the side of the tank as if it were a real 3D aquarium with a real spherical tank. You can see the refraction. So far, none of these announcements right are things that bend. other browsers so aren't cool. also really nice pursuing. Of what you can it's do just a matter with, of who's uh, first. Web. And Google's and showing off where they're can, first, of course. I'll ratchet us up to a thousand fish, uh, and the browser can still handle it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're excited about that. Now, the next one is another example of something you can do in WebGL. This is, a, this is a visualization of earthquakes that have happened in the last year overlaid on a globe. And you kind of spin the globe, has a little a real, a, a feel of real gravity and, uh, uh, and the, the, the spin of the, the earth as you, as you grab it and, and fling it. You can kind of see the... Yeah, Darth Gall points out the IE9 the beta can do these sorts of happening. things. Each one of these dots also does graphic, uh, accelerated graphics the in the browser. From the surface of the earth represents a larger... Earthquake. If you're just so joining us, like 40 Thieves, uh, they're just going here, through features of the Chrome the browser. Uh, then they're going to talk in, about the browser store and uh, update us on Chrome OS. At least that's enemies, what they said so far. But still somewhat illustrative of what an earthquake might look like if you could see it and we're in space. Um, here we go. There it is. So pretty cool. Now I have one more demo. WebGL stuff is very cool. With WebGL in the browser. And this one's a great example of something that uh, happens when, uh, when a team hears about the capabilities in the browser and they uh, get excited about something they've been wanting to do for a while. So this comes to us from the Google Health team. As oh, you can it see, it. it's a model of a body. Uh, you can move it around, you can spin it, you can zoom in and out. And I'll be care very careful about how I do this next part, or else this would have been a demo that would have been better suited for incognito. But you can remove layers, uh, and we'll just skip ahead to remove the musculature. You can see the bones. You can hide the bones and see the organs. You can hide the organs and see the circulatory and nervous. Of course, system. they're going to spend more time on WebGL uh, because it's visually you impressive. And navigate around. It's very nice. These are these the are fairly cool thing you can practical uses of it that they're showing here. For body part. 
not just flashy stuff. So I should confuse between the femur and the fibula. Well, the so I'll just type in F. Stuff. There you can see the femur. Fibula is the one below it. Femur, fibula. And you can learn about a whole bunch of other body parts just by scrolling down the list. The layers will hide and show appropriately. You zoom into the right locations, and you can see all these different body parts. And it's very smooth. All this Again, is Chrome is not the, the only GPU. browser that does uh, WebGL. Really easy to transition between these two states. They're just showing off uh, how, how it works in their browser. So I'm very excited and to they, see what they else are one of the will pioneers. these APIs in the browser. And, um, this guy is we'll not see, my little we'll brother, Corey. Um, but the most important thing is it's all going to be really, really fast. Fast is the word. They're pushing it all morning long. Not a big surprise. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I always get excited when new capabilities are added to browsers because developers are very imaginative, uh, and I can only imagine the kind of rich 3D graphical applications you're going to see on the web. In fact, this Liquid Galaxy demo of all the fish running around is in the back, back of the hall, and if you get a chance, you should take a look at it later. Continuing on speed, this is something uh, you know, we invest most of our time on. The whole speed journey for us when we launched Chrome started with something called V8. It was a brand new JavaScript engine, which was built by a team in Denmark, which was at that time the best-in-class JavaScript engine. When we launched V8, we were 8x faster in 2008 than the fastest JavaScript performance out there in the market. This is going to start fights, by the way, to later IE, today. We were about 16x faster. Most users on the web were using IE at the time. And so we were about 16x faster. We have continued to work on this JavaScript performance in every single release of Chrome since then. So if you look at how we have progressed uh, in the last few versions, we have made V8 another 4x faster. So it is about 32x faster than where browsers were two years ago. The good news is, because V8 is open source, a lot of browsers are improving JavaScript performance, and the web is getting much faster. We are very excited to announce that today we are adding an enhancement to V8. It is called Crankshaft, and it can be anywhere up to 2x faster, depending on the benchmark you use. So with V8 today, with Crankshaft, which uses a technology called adaptive compiling, we are about 50x as fast as web browsers were just two years ago. And if you compare it to IE two years ago, we are 100x faster. Well, don't compare so it to IE two years ago. About compare a minute to, to execute today. in JavaScript, about two years ago, can happen in less than a second today. That's progress in terms of speed, and it makes the web much, much faster. The next area we focus on in Chrome is simplicity. In fact, the name Chrome comes from the fact that we wanted to focus on the content of the web page, not the Chrome of the browser. If you looked at an average browser at the time we launched Chrome, if you take roughly 800 by 600 screen size, about one third of that screen real estate was used by the Chrome of the browser. Only two third of the real estate was left for the content of the web page. The Chrome meaning the The second insight we had in Chrome was that Chrome is only a around. tool for, to help users use the web. The browser is only there for you to use the web. And so the browser should be as minimal as possible. We constantly, while it is subtle and most people won't notice it, we constantly look at every pixel to free up real estate for the browser. We are now down to seven click targets. This is a, a Google browser. fetish. But simplicity is not just simplicity. UI alone. Not necessarily Again, a bad just thing. like speed, it goes beyond UI into all aspects of the browser. Here are a few, few additional things we do. Today, for most browsers, users are responsible for making sure the browser is in their latest and most secure version. If you use Google Chrome, we make sure we seamlessly and transparently auto-update users to the latest version. We've had over 30 stable updates in Chrome in the last two years, and users never notice. We take care of, take care of it for them. So that's simplicity. The second thing is we never, ever interrupt users when they're using Chrome with modal dialogues. By modal dialogues, I'm no talking about dialogues which appear in front of your browser asking you a question. You will never see that in Chrome. Unless and it's a so, app. again, it adds to the simplicity experience so that you can focus on the web. Today, we are very excited to announce a third, third area which I think really improves simplicity. We call this the same Chrome experience any, everywhere. If you go to Chrome today, in your preferences menu, you can turn on a feature called Chrome Sync. Ah, when you so turn they on are that feature, you can choose which data you want to sync. You can 
sync every aspect of your data. Mozilla Bookmarks, has the Mozilla themes, Sync, used to be called Weave. Applications, so that Chrome feels the same personalized Chrome, independent of the machine you use. It really makes the browser much simpler to use. Now how is this different from the old Chrome Sync? The third area on Chrome we want to talk to you about is security. I thought that was the you know, Security is kind of a dull area to talk about. Uh, but it turns out it's the most important area for users. They get impacted every day. In fact, the bad guys have it very, very easy on the web nowadays. They don't even need to work hard to find exploits. They can actually wait. They hear about a known exploit. So there's an exploit in a browser, and the browser has put out a new version. Users don't update their browser frequently. In fact, there is a big, long window before people update their browser to the latest version. So if you're a bad guy, you can actually wait. Wait till the exploit is identified. There is a known up patch for it out. You can still go and compromise all those users who haven't been updated to the latest version. So we are working to solve that problem in Chrome. It is never possible to design a perfectly secure system. So the way we approach security is what we call defense in depth, and hence a castle analogy. You have to build many, many layers of security so that if the first layer breaks down, the second layer is there to protect you and so on. So there are three main things we do in Chrome to keep users sane. The first is we build a castle. full auto updates. It is, it is extraordinarily important that you're always on the latest and the most secure version. We take care of that for users. The second is what we call sandboxing. Now, the sandboxing is what do a, we mean a by sandboxing? great innovation sandboxing uh, that Chrome brought and everyone else is, is trying to use it. A bad as well. piece of code, malware, gets, gets in your browser that it is contained within the browser and it cannot escape it to compromise the rest of your system. It cannot persist on the system. Again, not much it of this is new, data. it seems like. It they're, they're just sort of updating log on to your firmware and you know, read your keyboard strokes, etc. On stuff that already So existed. we protect that. People use the word sandbox casually, but in the world of security, among security researchers, it has a very precise meaning. They call this a security boundary. Chrome is the only true sandbox available in modern browsers. There are several research papers which validate this, and it provides state-of-the-art security. The Firefox beta connected. does have sandboxing. Today we are Internet excited Explorer to talk about also. The Internet Explorer 9 has sandboxing. sandboxing. But they're not official releases. You know, we have sandboxed web pages. But it turns out another common use case in browsers is to use plugins. Plugins are in sandbox in browsers today. And so that is a security vector. We are working with some of the most popular plugins out there. We started with PDF. Brian gave you a demo of how fast PDF is in Chrome. But what he didn't mention is it is fully built into Chrome. We constantly keep it updated, and it runs within the Chrome sandbox. So you don't have to worry about all those the Adobe we are working on security Adobe. holes. We are working closely with Adobe to make sure Flash, Flash is currently built into Chrome. We update Chrome users to the latest and secure version of Flash all the time. And we've partially sandboxed Flash, and we're going to be working with Adobe to make it fully sandboxed as well. So again, security is something which impacts users on a day-to-day -day basis, and we are working very, very hard to make Chrome secure. So the combination of speed, simplicity, and security is what we hope has helped us get tremendous adoption in the market. This is a history uh, of Chrome more one, than an announcement users, about Chrome, the and browser. Thank users for their support, and we look forward to more innovations there. Moving on beyond Chrome, the next big major feature which we are offering in Chrome to users is the Chrome Web Store. Okay, here we go. Now we got something new. About six months Besides ago at I.O., we first gave details of this project. Since then, we announced a developer SDK, and we've made lots of progress. Uh, there are many, many partners who have been working very closely with, with us in terms of getting applications ready. So we actually want to, want to give you a full demo of where the Web Delta's Store is today. Delta points out, moving but beyond Chrome, next up is why Chrome. we started working on the problem in the first place. Making everything Chrome the is... Web has Pretty confusing. Thousands and thousands of applications, more than any of us can count. But it is really, really hard for us to discover these applications. Uh, I gave this example at I.O. where I was trying to find a chess game for my kids, and it was very hard. I searched for it, a lot of links, but I could, I, no ratings, no reviews. I did not know which was the best game to go and play. But once I found one, later when I came back to my computer, I couldn't remember how to go back to it, etc. I keep encountering into this problem. Most recently, on my phone, I discovered this amazing application called Flickster. It's about movies. It's about reviews. You can find show times. It's a really nice app. 
I come back to my computer. It turns out Fixture is there on the web as well. I think but A. Barron is predicting well. Uh, he and says the line will be, and now all that's in the Chrome browser is in Chrome OS. So we've talked about all the things in the Chrome browser. We're going to talk about the Chrome Web Store. It's really hard to stand out in this world of applications. And more importantly, it's very hard to monetize applications. And then you have one tool in your arsenal, which is advertising. That works great in many cases, but there are cases where it doesn't work so well. People want to get paid for their apps, but today users don't trust a small independent developer and go to, go to some site which they don't know about and pay two or three or four dollars. They don't want to pay for to. web apps either. Those are the problems we set out to solve with the Chrome Web Store. So let's take a look. Uh, I would like to invite Can Liu, who's a product manager on Chrome, who's going to help us uh, demo the Chrome Web Store. So let's start by looking at the gallery, uh, which is the landing page of the Chrome Web Store. This is going to be an uphill so, battle for, for a lot of people, including myself. Why discovery. do I need a Chrome? Why do I need a web store? Very rich, visual, interactive, and we constantly work to feature new applications. So let's poke around and see what we can find. Let's go and click the news category. I'm a huge news fan, uh, so I tend to catch up on a lot of news. And as you can see, there are several news applications which are already in the gallery. Uh, one application which catches my eye is NPR. Uh, I listen to NPR all the time. NPR.org. High ratings. Uh, we, we already installed this application on this machine, so we'll go ahead and show it to you. So if you go to the NPR application, you need to install anything what you to go find to their is website. it looks very different from the web page today. Okay. So NPR has done some cool work on mobile platforms, and they've brought a lot of those elements to the web. So you can see it's a very rich, interactive application, and it's very, very easy to browse news. But it is a My web favorite page. feature is playlists. You can click on any article you like and keep adding it to the playlist. And once you're done, you can have it play in the background while you continue browsing. From NPR the Music, you're listening to a special performance by Elton John so, and Leon Russell. It was recorded live from. I want to show to you is Sports Illustrated. At Google I.O., we gave you a full demo of Sports Illustrated. I'm, I'm very excited to say the app is ready. I've been using it now. Uh, they call it SI Snapshot. Sports Illustrated is, is known cast. for the this is, quality is what this is. of their photos. This has been around As since the late fan, 90s. You love the amazing quality of You can do it a lot better with Ajax now. They've created an entire visual rich experience. But it's just uh, it's a variation on push content. Just on photos. And these are just and links. I don't understand why you need a web store. For you. There's a content section called MySI. And if you set it up, you will get sports news for your area, things you like, teams you like, etc. Again, a rich, visual, interactive application. These are great websites. I don't disagree with that, but they, but they are Let's go back to the gallery. web apps, websites. Another category of applications which we are very, very excited about is games. Turns out games are the most popular applications in every app store. So we've been working very hard on games as well, and so we want to show you how, how that works. Uh, there's a game here in the featured category called Dreams 2. Uh, I'm constantly looking for new games for my kids. So Offline here, use might be this good. game is $1.99. We want to show you how easy it is to purchase an app in the Chrome Web Store. Let's go ahead and buy and install it. So it's all integrated with your account. So you enter your credentials. We, we do a lot of work to make sure we detect fraud, et cetera. And so there's processing which there's happens so in the background. Websites it takes about with free five to 10 flash seconds, games. Why would you pay two bucks? And we get done with install. So this is a simple app which is... You know, normally, when I look for apps with my kids, these are apps in which I hope they will spend a, spend a few minutes and I can get a break. That's the this, dashboard this where all of your apps are stored. Really well. Glorified bookmark so screen, really. go there. Portal. I've tried playing this game. I never do well, but my daughter is amazing at it. So you just have to find differences. Turns out Tan is not that good at it either. So <laughs> let's, let's stop playing. But again, this is a game. It's written in Flash. Works great, and you can see you could per, you could purchase it easily in the web store. We are actually offering developers a variety of choices as to how to monetize their applications. So we want to put developers in control of how they want to reach users. And so let's let's pick another app, which is Cloud Canvas. This is a different category of app. Grunge Bob makes the point: drawing, this cuts into Steam app. and indie games, except really those good. are not it's web powerful. apps; those are downloads. App. These are web and, apps. You know, it is. Let's go ahead and find the app. It is about, I think it's $4.99 a month, so it's a subscription app. But what they have done is they want to offer users the ability to try it for free. So you can go ahead and try it for free. It's entirely up to the developer 
in terms of how long do they give a trial period, etc. So we want to offer the entire spectrum of options to developers and let developers choose how they want to reach users. Now, it's a good point. So given Apps a few in demos. the iOS store the Android are often glorified the websites themselves. To showcase partners. So we've been working with really, really major partners, uh, people who develop incredibly powerful applications and reach tens of millions of users. So I want to start by inviting Mark Franz from the New York Times, one of my favorite news publications, to give, give us a demo. So, so far, what we've heard is a little bit of a history of what Google Chrome browser is like. They've added Crankshift to the V8 JavaScript engine. And now they're talking about the Google Chrome web store and trying to make the case why you would want it. I think why you would want it is because they want to sell you Chrome OS on a netbook. And to sell you Chrome OS, they have to have a way to do apps. And the way to do apps on Chrome OS, which is essentially a browser, is to have a Chrome web store. We'll, we'll see if that's where they get to with this. Uh, right now, we have them uh, going into a little deeper investigation of, of one of the apps from the New York Times, which to me, you go to nytimes.com. Why do you need an app? It's a different layout, sure, but why do I need to pay for that? Isn't that just a link? Let's, let's listen and see what they have to say. HTML5, CSS3, advanced JavaScript, and some special features of the new Chrome browser. The result is a spectacular new way to read and share news and information, one that combines the immediacy and interactivity of our award-winning website with the readability, speed, and seamless navigation of an app. Let's take a look. But then my times for Chrome, you can browse the web your way. The app comes with 10 customized skins that let you scan headlines in everything from the most graphical to the most basic. Here's a quick sampling. With the email-like lines view, you can browse headlines in no time. The text-rich Doric skin comes close to mimicking the look and feel of a print newspaper. And on the opposite end of the visual spectrum, the photo gallery allows you to see the news and pictures. There's a big picture skin we call Stack, which showcases our stunning images and photography. Let's go to my favorite, the priority view, which displays the articles in the order of importance selected by our editors. Navigate between sections using your keyboard or if you happen to be using a touchscreen device with the flick of a finger. You can access the full list of keyboard commands by clicking on the shortcuts icon. The stories themselves have never looked more beautiful or more engaging, or been easier to read and share. You can also browse an entire section of articles from within any story with the touch of a cursor key. It's very fast. There are up-to-the-minute breaking news alerts, and for those times when you're not connected to the Internet, you can read our content offline. Installing the app is as simple as clicking on the Times icon in the Chrome Web Store. So there it is. We're truly excited to be pioneering the next generation of open web technologies with Google. It's only the beginning of what we can achieve. My question to that is, that's very nice. It's very cool. But why couldn't you just give me that in any browser? Even if you want to charge me for it, you're in the New York Times. So, that's part of your subscription. You get the cool the version of the website. It is, does seem to be just a website. Is that it works offline. So it does we'll work talk offline. Talk about this later. It's an important use case which we are addressing through the just Chrome Just answered Web Store. one of my questions. A lot of applications you see on the Chrome Web Store works offline even when you have no connectivity. I talked earlier about the importance of games on the Web Store. So I want to invite one of the leading uh, market players in the, in the world of gaming, EA. So we have the Chief Operating Officer of EA, John Shepard. Thanks, Sundar, and hi, everyone. EA has been a leader in interactive entertainment for more than 25 years. And much of that leadership is built on the innovation of strong brands and franchises. Today, we're proud to bring our strong games and franchises to the Google Chrome Web Store. If you're just uh, listening, uh, if you're just uh, checking in, we are uh, covering the live Google Chrome announcement. They've talked about the browser. Not much new there. They've talked about the Chrome Web Store. That's what they're going through right now, demonstrating different web apps and trying to make the case of why you'd want to buy a web app instead of just going to a link. Uh, of course, our uh, breaking news coverage is brought to you by Slingbox. Let's you watch your home TV anywhere you go on almost any portable device, iPhone, iPod Touch, BlackBerry, laptop, MacBook. You go to a Best Buy, you purchase Slingbox, take it home, plug it into your TV, plug it into your Internet. Then you get your television anywhere you are with an Internet connection, on your laptop, on your phone. Watch your TV your way. It is Slingbox. Check it out at a Best Buy near you or at slingbox.com slash twit. No extra subscription fees or anything. You just buy the box. You get anything that you get on your home TV anywhere you have an Internet connection. 
Right now they are uh, going through demos of different web apps. Right now uh, we've got a uh, Poppet game from EA. Uh, this is this looks like the kind of game that you would have on a uh, on a on a phone on a on a smartphone or a tablet or something like that. Uh, this is the Chrome browser store for your browser, which could run on a tablet. It could run on your laptop. It could run anywhere. So uh, it, it was just a bubble popping game. The, the question we're, we're trying to, uh, to get an answer from them right here is, what is compelling about this versus the way the web works now? HTML5 sites can be loaded offline, maybe not easily. Maybe it's the curation of the web store. Uh, it's, it gives you a good view of what stuff looks like. Let's take a look at the, uh, at the game. They're showing it right now. Uh, but I think Poppet players around the world are really going to love this new Poppet experience. I think the first thing that they're going to notice is the performance. It's blazing fast. It's simply the fastest and smoothest playing Poppet we've ever made. Now the next thing they're going to notice are the graphics. It's in full high definition right now. And it's the best looking Poppet, again, that they've ever played. It's the best looking Poppet. So, for all its sophistication and technology, it's still the same simple and fun poppet. It just is faster and prettier than ever before. So that's the new version of poppet. And you know, when we made poppet, we thought it's so much fun, everyone should have it. And so they will. Today, proud to announce that poppet will be embedded in the new Chrome 9 release. So when you download Chrome, You'll also You're get forced Pop to it. download Poppet. But you can also download Poppet today on the new Google Chrome Web Store, along with the suite of our other EA games right now. So we're real excited about Chrome 9 and the new Google Chrome Web Store and hope you like our games there. Thank you. It's all about perception. It's all about uh, what makes your life easier, whether this is going to catch on or not. play with my kids. Uh, so it's great to see Poppet on the web store. The, the final, final partner we want to invite on stage uh, for the web store is one of the pioneers of the web, Amazon. Uh, you know, they, they've been writing great applications. You've seen a lot of their great applications on the web, on, on mobile platforms. And today, we have two exciting apps they want to announce for the Chrome web store. So to talk about that, I want to invite Eva Manolis and David Lim from Amazon. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. You know, as the web has become more powerful and immersive, Amazon is constantly exploring ways that we can take advantage of that for our customers. We're really excited about the opportunity to distribute some of these new apps we've been developing through the, the Chrome Web Store. The one I want to talk about today is Window Shop, which will be available, uh, is now available, actually. This is similar to the to application the they have for the iOS. That's called Window Shop. Window Shop takes the uncompromising shopping experience that Amazon customers have grown to know and love but with a completely new and fluid interface. With Window Shop, you can browse bestsellers in consumer electronics and books, everything we've got, new releases from music and from movies, sports and outdoors, clothing, Virtually everything that's available through Amazon. Chrome.google.com slash web store is likely and where the store will show up if you want to keep an eye on whether it launches or not. Quick search for, the Poppet guys know, seem to imply cake. it will launch today. As you'd expect, there's many, many books on cakes. There's new music and old music from the band Cake. There's lots of tools you can use to decorate cakes. If you're a little less ambitious, you can buy a ready-made cake, have it shipped to your home. It's, oh, it, it's I one of the things think I've most of the people in our audience is, know how to shop on Amazon. App for everybody developing it, we're constantly this is, this is the same as the iOS app. It, it, it's a, a more visual way of shopping. It, it looks good. Uh, uh, and, I think the great thing that we're and it does a good job of suggesting things. All of the great products. I'd love to be able to see it in a browser. I don't know if I'd want to necessarily have to use Chrome to get to it. On Windows Shop, just like we have on Amazon.com. So all the high resolution imagery is there for you to enjoy, a lot of information about the product, and of course, importantly, all of our customer reviews. That one has not yet been reviewed. You can take a look 
at some of our other products, all available through windowshop.com. And of course, you can also browse through all the great selection we have for Kindle in our Kindle store. Let's take a look at this one here. I'm not quite sure what those are. Cake it's not pops. necessarily better like than Amazon.com. It's different than an Amazon.com. It's more of a so browsing situation three years, than a searching at situation. Amazon have been executing on a vision for Kindle to offer a big vision, which is to give every book ever printed in any language anywhere in the world in less than 60 seconds. And to execute against that, we've built a great Kindle device, but we also have built a series of applications. Here we go. This is the Kindle uh, for web For all sorts of different platforms, readers, from Android to iOS. And today, those allow you, as a user, to buy once and read anywhere. So we're very excited today to be able to announce for the first time and show for the first time, actually, Kindle for the web. This is an application that's been built from the ground up using now, HTML5 only to give you the access to all the books that you love with directly within the browser. And you do it without any plugins and without any downloads. So it's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and uh, exit out of the Windows Shop application here. And we'll go ahead and bring up the, the beginning here and launch Kindle for the web. The first thing that you're going to see here is that it's a no compromise application. It looks like an application. It feels like an application. You can navigate through it. So this is our traditional grid view. And you notice because it is Kindle, all of the books that I have available to me are all backed up into the cloud. So they're here ready for me even though I'm coming at this from a web browser. But because we had access to new HTML5 technology and different types of things from the web, we were able to give different views to this information as well. So this is one of my favorites. This is a flow view that we've been able to add to the application. You can see as I kind of dial through here, you get very, very high performance as we look through the books that are in my library right now. The, the book that Eva just showed on Windows Shop here is Cake Pops. I'll, uh, sorry about that. Go back to Cake Pops here. This is interesting since Google just launched their that. bookstore. And Yesterday. Oops. A little too fast. I guess. I don't know what's And now we have a competing bookstore on Google Chrome browser. So we have Cake Pops up on the screen now. And what, well, because we're using web technologies, we can integrate with a lot of the other properties that Amazon has. So here we've brought in some of the information we have from our social networking site on reading called Shelfari. People can do character, uh, character plots uh, and give you summaries of what's going on inside the book. But the most important thing is that we can quickly go off and kind of read this book. And like all, always with our philosophy around Kindle, once you get inside of the book, we want the, we want the technology to disappear and the book to take front and center. We want you to be absorbed in the story as the author originally intended. And here we have a great cookbook that shows you great, beautiful graphics. One of the advantages of, the of Google book. Editions, kind of the Google ebook store, like page is that it, you could read the book way. on in a, a web browser seamless. anywhere. They're very, very fast. We also Google just gave we have Amazon that capability here. We have great fonts in this, and as a user, you have the control to be able to set up your line spacing, how you want the margins to look, how big and, and small you want the font to be up here on the screen. And we can go ahead and bring that up as we kind of go back and forth here. And all of this has been built inside of the web to be able to give you a great experience and be able to give you that Kindle experience that you want today and tomorrow. Now, as we also move forward, not only do you get this as a reader, but because these technologies are embedded, anybody with a website out there today can take these, add them to the website, and make their own website a bookstore for themselves. And you can then have the one-click purchase right off to these books that you've seen here today. We're, we're going to be launching Kindle for the Web early next year, and we hope that you all get a chance to try it out when it appears in the Chrome Web Store. Thanks. Did not clarify whether it would be available only on the Chrome Web Store or if this would be a, uh, an HTML5 accessible app on other browsers. Is launching today and of I can't course. wait to see uh, Kindle uh, come on the web and in the Chrome uh, Web Store. So the Web Store is actually ready for use today. So people can go to this URL. It will be rolling out later today. Anyone on, from Chrome can go to the URL chrome.google.com slash web store and start using the store. We, Still we are says starting off soon, with around right 500 applications because we've been working uh, directly with partners, but now it's out in the open, and we expect the number of ap applications to grow very, very shortly. Uh, again, what we will also do is start featuring the store very prominently in the new tab page of Chrome. We'll start in the US uh, in Q1 and start rolling it out all over the world with payment systems integrated. And our, and our goal is to make sure developers can reach the 120 million users of Chrome 
far more than users available for any other app store today. So we think it's a very, very exciting step, and I can't wait uh, for users to try out and let us know what they think. The third topic, uh, which we want to give you an update on, is Chrome OS. All right, here we go. This is the so bigger Chrome OS of the is announcements. something we started working on in earnest about a year ago. And we announced the open source project. I think it's worth recapping why we started working on this problem in the first place. When we launched Chrome, we noticed that based on every data we could find, people live within the browser and use the web most of the time. In fact, since 2004 on your computers, it is very hard to name a single application outside of the web, a traditional desktop application, which has scaled to millions of users. Very hard to name even one. And you can name hundreds of web applications. People are voting very strongly. It's a very profound shift. 40 Thieves so pointed out in the chat room that the, uh, the Chrome apps the have a .CRX extension, so they are packaged, they are separated. Today, Part of the sandbox. Most of the code on the system, most of the complexity on the system, the security issues you run into the system, the maintenance you deal with the system has nothing to do with the browser or the web. In fact, if you were to write operating systems today, this is not how you would write it. Most operating systems today on personal computers were designed before the web even existed. So we really wanted to take the opportunity to rethink the personal computing experience for the modern web, where users live most of their time on their favorite web applications. And that is what Chrome OS is about. In fact, Chrome OS is nothing but the web. We have gone to great lengths to make sure it's essentially as close as possible Chrome running on hardware directly. Sounds simplistic when you say that, but once you make that fundamental assumption, once you make that basic assumption, you can deliver a far simpler, safer, more secure, and a delightful experience. It's easier actually to show it rather than talk about it. So we, we're going to give you a full demo from a Chrome notebook. Uh, we have a reference hardware we are going to use for the purpose of this demo, and Tan is going to help me walk through, uh, walk through Chrome OS. Let's first start with your Windows machine. So because that's where we have been demoing Chrome since then, uh, we can minimize and show you it's your PC. And you can see we had the Chrome Web Store. This is Can's world. These are the applications he has installed. This is his theme. He clearly loves speed, probably why he loves Chrome as well. So he has a rocket theme. Mm. Uh, you can see he has bookmarks on top. This is his world, a very, very personalized world. So what we want to go through is what a real user is going to go through when they first get a brand new Chrome notebook and they open it outside their box. So we want to walk with you the end-to-end -end experience. So let's imagine Tan heard about Chrome notebooks and he wants to go ahead and start setting up a Chrome notebook. Yeah, the idea so is Chrome switch, OS will be a notebook-oriented operating notebook. system separating and it from Android, which will be tablets and phones. They first open the lid. Well, let's look at so this. So you open the box. This is what you see. You have to choose your internet connectivity, obviously, so you can do that. The next step is for you to read. The second step is for you to read and accept terms and conditions. So once you do that, we check for updates. In this case, we are in the latest version. I do like that and they're showing it from boot up. This is you can continue without logging in if you want. Something people don't do a lot of the, the time. The next step is for you to take a picture. <laughs> it turns out about 50% of users don't like their pictures being taken. Uh, so we need to improve this step. But Cam clearly is not one of them. You can So skip let's go it. ahead and take a picture, Cam. So we'll click OK. And what you will see is we are now we are going to launch you into the Chrome Notebook. Four steps, and you're inside in a brand new Chrome Notebook with your applications, your bookmarks, your themes, your That's where the Chrome Sync comes Zero in. Zero to done in less than 60 seconds on oh, a brand yeah, new yeah. machine. <laughs> we, we wanted to compare and contrast this with setting up a PC. But we realized we wouldn't have time in this event for us to set up our entire PC and get you back to all your data. Burn. That's how much simpler this experience can be. So, so this, is, this is how you set up the computer. So instant boot, instant setup. Another common use case people run into with their laptops, their notebooks is, they constantly close the lid because you know, they want to save power. They want to put it on standby. And then they really want to get back to the web very, very quickly. But it takes time for your computer to wake up. In fact, at Google, I've seen the syndrome by which people actually walk around with their laptops open. 
because they, they know once they close it, it takes some time to go back, check where the next meeting is, etc. Again, because we want to deliver the web to you instantly, we have taken the time to make sure we can resume instantly as well. Uh, we resume very, very fast. In fact, we resume so fast, it's hard for the projectors to keep up. So if you could bear with us, we're going to get a real live camera in. So let's go ahead and put the machine in standby. So now we are putting the laptop in full standby mode. Well, it uh, works is, almost, I you know, bet it, it works it almost like an embedded system. Mode. Imagine Ken wants to go out for a movie that evening. So he just wants to sort find information about on. movies. Let's go ahead and resume the Chrome notebook. And, and, you know, as you can see, the projector is coming back now. But it demos and it's connected back to the internet instantly in the order of milliseconds every time. Because all it's doing is running a browser. In fact, the delaying the factor is for the user to move their hands, type in the keyboard, and complete the query. So again, you can set up the machine instantly. It boots near instantly. And resume is really instant. Just the really Chrome instant. Web Store so, relies on the excess of, of this, Chrome OS. The Chrome Web Store exists to support this. Uh, if you're wondering, well, this doesn't make any sense for me on my desktop. That's why. Building nothing but the web, we can do amazing things. We can deliver the same experience to you everywhere. So let's go back and get on the screen both the PC and the Chrome notebook. So on one side, you're seeing the PC, Chrome running on the PC. On the other side, you're seeing Chrome running on a Chrome notebook. So let's go ahead. It's common for users. Ken is going to move around his home. The apps can work offline, by the way, it's if you're worried about both connecting. Machines. Let's see how that world looks like. Why don't we go ahead and uninstall the team from one of the machines? So we're going to go ahead. Ken has changed his mind about the team. He's gotten tired of it, so he uninstalled the team. Let's go ahead and uninstall an application on the other machine. That is Reader. So, you know, well, do you want to go ahead and uninstall Ken? OK, great. So Ken can go ahead and uninstall Reader. And once he does, you can see these changes propagate across all these machines instantly. So the team is gone from both these machines, and the app should get uninstalled in about 10 to 20 seconds. So again, Still we waiting. make it possible for you to get the same experience everywhere. It really does not matter which application. The was, application was is now gone. Fail? So or it does not matter something? which device you use. You can use Chrome on your computer, on your Windows, Mac, move to Chrome on a Chrome notebook within a matter of seconds. Sometimes like literally within one second, we propagate your important data everywhere. We call this the same experience everywhere. The fourth use case, let's go back to the Chrome notebook. The fourth use case we want to well, show you gone. is sharing. It's very common for all of us to share our computers. You know, we share it at home with family and friends. Uh, and, but it's really hard to share your computers today. So in this case, Ken is sharing this computer with his wife. Again, because we deliver the same experience everywhere, all his wife needs to do, anytime pick up the notebook, log in with her credentials, she gets her experience. In fact, she can walk away with the machine, and it doesn't matter whose machine this device really is. It is a true cloud As long as device. it's connected. The other use case which we have worked to optimize is how do you share it with a friend? You know, it's very common. For example, I go through this. I have friends visiting, and they occasionally want to use my computer. I hesitate a little bit because you know, I don't want them to see my full browsing history. I see some discomfort with them as well as they're using my machine. They're careful because they're worried that I will have access to their browsing history. So we've really thought about this use case. So all your friend needs to do is to click on the guest mode. So you can open your lid. It'll be here. You can ask them to use it on the guest mode. And we open a full incognito session of Chrome for your friend. Everything. In fact, it is the most private mode today I've seen on any computers. Your friend, friend can use the device in the guest mode. Everything he does in this mode is private. Once he closes and exits guest mode, it's wiped out. I can't see what he has done. A fun he challenge for no hackers to disprove. Any of my data. We call this the friends let friends login feature. So we've made it, again, really, by delivering nothing but the web, we've made it very, very easy for you to share your computers. So far, walking through these use cases, it's very obvious connectivity is an integral part of this experience. But we realize you won't be connected all the time. So we want to show you how that use case looks like. So let's imagine Ken is going back from Mountain View. He lives in New York, and so he's going back to New York on a trip uh, back home, and he's reached the airport. Luckily, he has Wi-Fi, so he starts working on Google Docs. 
So he's going to go ahead and create a document for work, uh, which is an important document he's working on. When he realizes it's time for him to board the plane. Unfortunately, he is not on Virgin, Air Trans, or Delta. Because if you were in one of those airlines, you get free, you get free Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi sponsored yeah, by Google good. Chrome. But he's on a different airline, and so he doesn't have free Wi-Fi. So he's within the, within the plane, not a problem, right? So he can continue working on Google Docs. Let's, we just disconnected the connectivity. We can even show it to you by going to google.com. The device is no longer connected. The device is offline. You can go back to Google Docs and continue working on the document. Not a problem. You can keep working on it. Google Docs is an application I love. It's amazingly collaborative. The next time he gets connectivity, not only will his changes get synced, other people could be working on the document at the same time, and they will all get synced. So the Google Docs team is working on this feature uh, to make it work offline. They'll have more details today, but it's an upcoming feature of Google Docs, which I think really helps complete the story. So you can continue to be productive even when you're not connected. But you, know, you don't always want to do work. You want to have fun at times. So let's assume Ken, the plane gets bored. He can go back to the web store. And again, a whole set of apps on the Chrome web store will work offline. Those of you on the live example, broadcast wondering, MacBreak Weekly will follow immediately after our because coverage of the offline. Google Chrome announcement brought to you by Slingbox. In fact, Andy Anako is going to join us here in a few minutes offline, on the coverage. They've cached the game there he locally is. on the machine. So it's the kind of game in which it's very difficult. Uh, you should try playing it. But he can continue doing it without any Wi-Fi connectivity. We also want to show you what else you can do. You can read news. Earlier, New York Times showed how their apps works offline. They're in the process of completing it, but we will go ahead and show it to you again. You're not connected. You can click, and you will be within New York Times. So we've made it possible for you to use this device even if you're not in if you don't have connectivity. Now, when did it get Having that news? That, last time you were connected we or last time you launched the app? You really need to be connected. What does it mean in today's world of Twitter, real-time updates, social networking, constant email, constant news? I really think computers aren't that useful when you're not connected. So given this is a cloud computing device, we've put in a lot of work to make sure users always have the option, always have the option to stay connected with a Chrome notebook. We'll show you how it works. So Khan has landed in, the, landed in New York, landed safely in New York, and he's on a taxi cab ride home. So obviously he has no connectivity, but he wants to plan dinner. What he can do, he can go ahead and enable cellular connectivity. As you can see, he's doing that right now. Every Chrome notebook will ship with built-in data connectivity. You can switch seamlessly between Wi-Fi and cellular. So we're going to show that he's back connectivity. You can see on the top of the icon, That's he's actually using it on 3G. It works really well in 3G. And we can't, you know, as, as, as LTE rolls along, we are very excited to adopt that as well. That means so the notebooks will be handled by the carriers, it Let's seems like. Let's go and do a query. Maybe he wants to plan dinner. And it turns out he heard something about spaghetti tacos. And he's really exi excited at having that for dinner. The point here is it works. We are doing this in 3G. We can even show other use cases. So he found a recipe. He can go out and print from his taxi cab without any printer drivers on his machine. No printer drivers. Using Google Cloud Print, Where is he, he can print on any device connected to his network. And so he's, go, he's going to go out and print it so that it's ready for him at his home, and it'll get printed. Okay. As you can see, it's printing out right now. Uh, and that's recipe for cans dinner. So the thing which you've done, Google Cloud Print, by the way, is in beta, and it'll be rolling out shortly as well. There you go, Ken. Thanks. So, so Andy and Otko, thank you for joining us. How did we do this? So I want to give you details on how Chrome OS is connected. Oh, so let's go back to, to the We have to turn slides. you up. You're turned up. I can't hear you. We have partnered with a leading wireless carrier in the United States, Verizon Wireless to offer seamless built-in connectivity in every Chrome notebook. Oh, the partnered with unique. Verizon. Work with us closely to make sure the customer is at the center of this experience. You have no contracts, no commitments. When so only Verizon? Notebook, every user has 100 megs of free data every month. For wow. Years. I misclicked. All, all, all you need to do is to go out and activate it. The activation process takes about five minutes. 
we are working very closely with Verizon to make that even simpler. It's a fully self-driven activation process. Again, no commitments, no contracts, etc. You pay for only what you need. A unique part of the plan That's is you just huge. get a day pass. Anytime you want, if you're above the 100 megs, you can get a day pass for 9.99 and you get unlimited data for a day. Or you can buy data in chunks. You can buy one gigabyte at a time and, and you keep going that way. Again, the plans aren't recurring automatically just because you buy it once. So it is a really customer friendly plan built with customer in mind. You pay for what you use. I've been using my device on Verizon Network. That's what we demoed it to you here. It works amazingly well. You can, the web is really usable. So we're very excited. Given the nature of this device, we will give you the option to use it offline. But more importantly, as users, as you travel around, you know, we, we, we have built in a Gobi world mode uh, modem from Qualcomm, which powers all of this. So we'll enable international options as well. So Users can move around and always be connected with the device. The 100 megabytes free data every month. That's killer. I don't know, uh, I don't know what Andy thinks, but that re that's the pizza Chrome guy ringing Chrome the doorbell for me. Simplicity. <laughs> Just like with Chrome. Secular you guys hear me now? Huge yeah, we hear you now. For Chrome okay, good. Just want to take a minute and talk to you about how today's PCs work from a security standpoint. It's very big because remember that very, the biggest problem with the Samsung tab was, was the forty-five dollar reactivation fee every yeah. time you turn on the three G and the That's contracts huge. and all of that. You have to make sure your computer is up to date. In the case of Chrome, I talked about keeping the browser up to date, but in the case of the operating system on your PC, you have to make sure every single application on your PC is up to date. On top of it, you have to make sure your entire operating system is up to date. Otherwise, you can get compromised, and it happens every day. Users have to decide what files they can install. They get these security warnings, which says, do you want to trust and install this executable? Data shows again and again. The single biggest security threat on computers is between the keyboard and the seat. It's the users. Okay. We are busy. We keep doing other things. We click wrong once, click yes wrongly once, you've compromised your machine. So the onus of security on PCs today is on the user. We think this can be very, very different. And that's what the Chrome OS security is all about. Again, let's go back to the difference in depth strategy. So we had the castle, which is Chrome. We already had that. So you're browsing within Chrome. You get all of Chrome's updates. You get Chrome sandboxing. But we've added several additional layers in Chrome OS. First of all, the entire operating system will be automatically updated for users. You never ever deal with updating the operating system. Does that uh, count against your 100 All megabytes? Your applications in your app store, <laughs> your operating system will be seamlessly updated, keeping the machine very secure. We have added additional sandboxing beyond the browser at an operating system level. So if malware escapes the browser, we keep containing it in another security boundary, etc. So that is a huge protection. The third area, which I'm excited by, is by default, all user data in Chrome OS, by default, is encrypted, heavily encrypted, Good. which is why tomorrow I can close my machine, hand it to another user. I don't need to worry about it. The data yeah, is encrypted still by default. Mm -hmm. Finally, an area which is an amazing computer science innovation, which I want to talk about, is verified boot. This idea has been around for a while. Uh, you know, we hope to be the first consumer operating system which ever ships verified boot. What verified boot, boot does is you take the core initial part of the operating system, the core initial part, and you put it on your device in what we call read-only firmware. You put it in a part of the device which no software, no software can modify or alter it. Unless you physically get access to the device, swap out that component, you cannot alter or modify that core initial part of the operating system. So we always know that is safe. Hard to update. Every time when you boot Chrome OS, we use that safe part to cryptographically, digitally check every other component of the operating system to make sure it hasn't been modified or altered. If we detect any changes, any changes, we keep a known good backup copy to which we can revert or we can warn the user. It is very, very hard to compromise this layer. The combination of all, all, the, all these layers, you know, we are very confident that when we ship Chrome notebooks, it will be the most secure consumer operating system that has ever been shipped. Always a dangerous to thing to say.
security is an integral part of this experience. Right now, people are saving that video clip for future use. Yeah. Oh, and uh, and he's already been hacked. We're buffered. <laughs> right after he said that, our stream went buffer. <laughs> Mac Breaks exactly. Weekly will be uh, starting shortly after this announcement starts streaming again. And uh, once, once we're finished, we're waiting to see if they, they announce uh, availability of the netbooks that will run Chrome OS. But we're, we're totally buffering, aren't we? Andy, I saw your Twitter about uh, the, the pizza delivery guy who can't find the doorbell. <laughs> Did they ever get there for you? Uh, uh, I f he's, he's walked in, and the housewife is in a frilly negligee, but they're still talking about how they're going to pay for the pizza. Uh, it's still a, it's, it's a typical... It's something I see too much from Google, in which they're willing to talk end over end over end about all the technology, but I haven't heard them talk about why is this more usable? Why will these web apps, excuse me, well, why will these Chrome OS apps be easier for people to use? Why will people like a Chrome notebook over, over anything else, really? It's I mean, security, supposedly, in auto, uh, uh, in, uh, auto updates and uh, uh, transportability uh, from the desktop browser to the note, to the notebook, but they haven't said that here's why this device, here's how, why this operating system needed to be made and why we couldn't do it as an Android thing. All right, we got the stream back. It's a Excellent. couple of orders of magnitude different. So the Delta is so huge, we've, we've actually been inundated with, in, uh, you know, with interest from, from the enterprise, from CIOs. In fact, one of the leading enterprise solutions vendor, Citrix Systems, they actually today work with a lot of companies. They work with CIOs today. CIOs suggested, given what you're trying to do and given what Chrome OS is trying to do, why don't you work together to make sure we can also access important productivity applications directly from Chrome notebooks? To show you how that works, I'm going to invite Gordon Payne, who's the SVP of Citrix Systems. All right, they got 10 right. minutes. Thanks. Uh so we'll wrap this up before they get to the Q&A. I'm going to have uh, Brad Peterson, our chief demonstration officer from Citrix, join me on stage uh, uh, here as well. <laughs> we are absolutely excited to be working with Chrome on, uh, or Google on Chrome and Chrome uh, OS, uh, and we're excited about uh, the partnership. The best thing about this uh, partnership that Sundar just mentioned is that it is absolutely customer-driven. These are CIOs and organizations where Google has been out talking with uh, the organizations, and they suggested that we should partner together. So why is that? Well, uh, Citrix uh, is deployed widely in organizations. We've spent the last 10 or 15 years taking applications off of PCs, moving them to the data center, running them safely, securely in the data center, and delivering them as a service. By the way, like everything is on the web, this is a way to make Chrome OS a thin client. For workers inside the organization and for remote uh, access uh, as well. So with that centralization and delivery of enterprise and business applications uh, as, a, as a service, this is a natural partnership with Chrome OS and Chrome uh, Notebooks. As an example, we have approximately 250,000 customers around the world centralizing and delivering their applications within uh, their organization. This is every kind of business. Banks, retail, hospitals, uh, government, manufacturing. And they may have 200, 250,000 employees, or they may have 50 employees. So very large and very small and very broadly uh, uh, deployed. So we've been off doing this uh, and centralizing applications, delivering them as, as a service. Now, the way our uh, users get access to those applications is something called Citrix Receiver. Citrix Receiver works on PCs, on Macs, on just about every tablet on the uh, planet. We call ourselves Tablets Are Us these days. Every smartphone. You can go to the Android market, download Citrix Receiver and have it uh, run on your Android phone. And if your company has uh, Citrix, you can get access to all of your applications in your organization through Citrix Receiver. So we've been working with the engineering teams in uh, Google to make Citrix Receiver work very well. They haven't announced uh, with, Chrome OS's um, release yet. Uh, Chrome OS. And if we can move they did sort of imply uh, to that, the didn't uh, uh, demo. Now, I've heard uh, that Chrome OS will not be available for download for Citrix Receiver. regularly. So you've got Chrome OS. So you'll have to buy a device uh, to get uh, it. the browser. You hit this tab. And whether you're in the company or remote, you can log in and get your applications. 
So Brad, can you give us a bit of a tour? I will do just that. So here I'm going to go ahead and click on login. And this brings me to my home page for Citrix Receiver. So these are the enterprise applications that I use day in and day out. Just a couple, two, three here as an example. If I click on the first productivity application that you see there, you might be familiar with, it's going to open it up. It's going to run right in front of me here, and it's going to appear as though it's here in front of me. In fact, it's very interactive when I connect in here and start changing values. People in the chat room pointing out the Chromium OS, the open source version that and Google okay. so uses on, as the base, so will probably be available for download. We're accessing Excel in Chrome, but Excel is actually running on the server in the data center, the private cloud of the company in their own data center. So it's safe, secure, runs And this in is the a pitch center. to get Chrome OS and accepted in the enterprise, get launched? companies to buy it. Yeah. Excel doesn't say, launch you know, that fast. You can still use all of the stuff that you're worried about losing right? if you so go off fast, of a Windows yeah. machine. And now you're in the environment. It is fast and responsive. Even though it's in the data center, uh, all of this is right here. That's right. And the nice part about this is this is a spreadsheet that I was working on earlier in the day. So I come up to another device. It's like on live it's for business applications. Now, in addition to spreadsheets, let's look at some of these other applications we saw here, more financial-based applications like SAP. So uh oh, we got buffered again. We're going to find SAP oh, in enterprises around the world. Clearly, a client-server-based application. Connect in, gets you to the logon prompt. You can go right inside SAP. So, just on uh, SAP, every company's financial system, their supply chain, customer relationship management, on, running on SAP. Now, after you've seen Pop It, I don't think this is one of those things that we want to go and, yeah, uh, and demonstrate. So, if you've got but something this that's is a little, kind of fun I don't know. This may now, be this more a interesting than Pop It. So, there's a lot of data involved here. SolidWorks, come up into this little C do design, you know, decide whether you want to go into shaded form or not, or pop a perspective on here. And again, complex, heavy data, rich experience here. We're all running in the data center, sent to me here. Now, I'm sitting here working away on all these different tabs that I brought up. So I've got Excel, and I can still crank away in there, pop into SAP, and still go into... And we don't know the power of the devices so Chrome OS will be running on, which would affect how good this kind of thing will work in real life. Shut them down or shut them down if you want. That's right. Okay. Now, what if cool. I want more apps? Because three is never enough. We can go into the Enterprise Apps location here with Citrix Receiver. So this represents here, and if I go over to the side and scroll down, all the applications inside the Enterprise. So you can imagine companies around the world with hundreds, if not thousands, of applications that are made available to their employees already with Citrix. Well, now you can come in with Receiver and go and access those. If I click on I'd SAP, prefer to actually just have space, desktop access me that the SAP Enterprise with the, everything that's, that's on my desktop. Added. I just showed you that. And, and, I, I, and then Chrome OS is my portable Isn't that a surprise? notebook, and I can just yes. access it that way. Now here, I've got go to my uh, PC additional solution. SAP applications that I could pick, but I can also go in and grab some others that I don't have yet, like Hyperion. So search for that, grab a few Hyperion applications, click on Add. I can add those into my home space within the browser here, and now they are. If I go ahead and launch one of those, it opens right up. Oh, there you go. I hate it when, I, when my parent is invalid. It launches uh, the application. Ah, uh, demos. Go. All right, it should. <laughs> now, as it does, it logs to that in the background. We're going to see the rest of our applications are still open. And we can continue to work with those across the tabs here. And again, very interactive data. Okay. Can you just go back to the store, Brad? So we have multiple applications uh, running. We have the store. Good well, point, Jimmy. Citrix Receiver won't work offline. The user experience is very similar to uh, the Google uh, Web Store. This is a private store uh, in the organization. So nice and simple and consistent for users from uh, the public web uh, and also with uh, private cloud uh, implementations. Very, very uh, cool. So for our uh, users, what you saw in the, uh, the demonstration here was accessing applications, launching applications, getting more applications, running applications. Great and simple uh, for our, our users. And these applications are already in the enterprise. So you bring in a, uh, a Chrome uh, notebook, and you'll have immediate access to all of the Someone enterprise applications early. Uh, as well. <laughs> We're working on this uh, jointly uh, with Google. We expect to introduce it in the first half uh, of next year to enable all of our customers to be able to adopt uh, Chrome uh, OS and notebooks within the organization. So back to Sundar's point as the introduction uh, here, what we're doing with all of this is taking all of the applications off of machines into the data center. So you have your apps and data in the data center that's secure. The next thing is it's unbelievably simple to use. It's simple. And also, it's a little bit fun. Imagine that in enterprise uh, applications. 
And last but not least, really easy to manage the endpoint devices and all of the things that are in the data center. So you know that we're going to reduce the cost of managing uh, applications. And that's a beautiful thing. So with that, I'll turn it back to Sundar to complete the story. Thank you. All right, we want some price and availability, Sindar, and wrap us yep. up so we can go on to MacRake Weekly. So that really helps complete the story and make it much more attractive for businesses. So let's go ahead and recap what we have shown you on Chrome OS. By building an experience which is nothing but the web, we can make it instant, instant for you to set up, boot, and get on the web all the time. We deliver the same experience everywhere, independent of the device you use. It's extremely simple to share, seamless sharing with friends and family. It's always connected. You can use it offline, but we give users the option to be always connected with built-in connectivity from Verizon, anytime, anywhere. A little Security expensive, but a cool built -in feature. From the ground up. The final point I want to add is, if you remember the day, the first day when you go and buy a brand new shiny PC, it feels really good that day. A month later, it's gotten a bit slower. A year later, it's actually a lot slower. You have a lot of applications slowing it down. It used to take maybe 30 seconds to boot up, but it now takes a minute to boot up. Computers get slow over time. We want to deliver an experience which is the opposite. I've been using a Chrome notebook for six months, and the computer actually gets better over time. The reason is, just oh, like Chrome, we have a new version it. of the operating system <laughs> every few weeks, and we autom automatically update to you, so you don't need to it's very hard in today's PC to go and buy a new version of the operating system and update your machine to that version. I hope you can set so when it goes and updates experience where the computer Yeah, I don't like giving up that much control. Yeah. So that is what the product is. So mm. let's talk about where we are now. So it's meant to simulate a, a work in progress. We started working on it in earnest about a year ago. Amazing progress, but we aren't fully done yet. Um, the cloud print example I showed you, works, but it is in a beta stage. We need to get it to stable. These devices have USB, USB ports. We expect people to plug in cameras. We exactly know what we need to do there. We haven't quite done the work yet. We need to tune performance more uh, so that it is really Chrome fast end-to-end -end across the device. And finally, there are bugs, just like you would find beta software. So we realize we have some time left to go. Let me first tell you what is coming from partners in retail. Okay, here we go. We're very excited to announce that we are working with two of the leading OEMs in the world. Acer is one of the leading PC manufacturers in the world, and Samsung is one of the leading consumer electronics vendors in the world. We are working with them closely along with Intel. These will be powered by Intel chips to deliver Chrome notebooks in the hands of consumers in the mid of 2011. There are many other OEMs who are working on it, and they will follow uh, with various devices and form factors after that. So that's what's coming down the line. It's about the timing of this announcement, if this isn't coming until Having said that, yeah. I've been living on this device internally for six months. As Get it out in advance device. of CES, maybe. Thousands of Googlers, thousands of Googlers are actually using this as their main computer. Uh, we, we are testing it internally. So given this is an open source project and we are working with community and partners, we actually wanted to have a program by which we could ship these devices, a few of these devices externally, so that real users can test out and give us feedback. Ah, oh, this is why. So I'm very, very excited to announce that today we are introducing the Chrome OS pilot program. So the program is intended for early adopters, users who are used to using beta software, to use it and give us feedback. Let me give you details of the pilot program. First, let me show the device. So. This is the device which we are going to use for the pilot program. We call it CR48. Uh, CR stands for Chromium. There are many isotopes of Chromium, but after a day's debate amongst the engineers at Google, they figured 48 is the isotope <laughs> they want to name this device. All right, uh, I love at. that. <laughs> it is, as you can see, it's completely unbranded. It's, it's available in any color as long as it's black. There are no brands. No stickers. But who made the it? hardware exists only to test the software. Having said that, there are attributes of this device which we hope to see in our partner hardware as well. So we'll give you some of the high-level specs. First of all, it has a 12.1-inch display. Really optimized. It's a high-resolution display optimized for the web. It's a full-size keyboard. 
There's no shrink in the keyboard, so that it's really e easy to use for hours at a time. Does it have a Windows key? A huge, oversized touchpad, clickable touchpad. We have 3G built in. That's a fast dual, dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11n, both inbound and outbound, so it's very fast. It has over eight hours of active use. I pretty much use it all day without needing to carry a charger, and well over a week of standby time with a webcam built in. Given this is for the web, we made a few changes as well. There are no caps lock keys. We are optimistic it will improve the quality of comments all so over the web. So it's not a full keyboard. <laughs> no there shouting no on a Chrome well. OS. My mom still hasn't figured out what to do with the function keys. Uh, there are no hard drives, no spinning disks. We occasionally drop these to test it out. It has more than enough gigabytes you need, but there are no hard drives. And finally, jailbreaking mode is a built-in feature of the product. So, as developers, you can flip the device, Love that. take out the battery, flip a switch, you can do whatever you want. You can install another operating system too. It's fully available for you to break into. So, that's our reference hardware, CR48. So, let me talk about how we are going to distribute it in the pilot program. First is businesses. We mentioned how CIOs have been very inter interested in deploying this. We're very excited to announce all the partners mentioned on this slide are going to be deploying pilot programs of Chrome Notebooks, of CR48. Start applying so now. So there are many names here. There are companies like Midwest Vaco, uh, uh, which is based in uh, Chicago. Jason's Deli is going to get there, overwhelmed with applications. People from their IT teams actually had Chromium OS running on their machines before we even approached them. Actually, they approached us. American Airlines sees this as an ideal candidate for remote reservation agents. All they do is live within a browser while, while they handle reservations. In fact, we've, we've had so much interest from call centers. There are call centers which have 3,000 employees who spend their entire day living within the browser, and they run complex PCs today, which are insecure, and it's very costly to administer. We just want to get Virgin those details America, of how you might be able to get this one, then we're going to hand it over to MacBreak uh, Weekly. certain portions of their organization, their CIO sees it as a candidate for the entire company. They think this could work for their entire company. So that's an opportunity as well. One final name I would like to call out is Depart Department of Defense, who knows a thing or two about security. They are interested in deploying it in some of their affiliated Wiki organizations Wiki notwithstanding. Well. Uh, and they told us we can tell you what those organizations were. So that's, that's how we are going to give it to businesses. Let's talk about the pilot program for consumers. As I'm speaking today, in the new tab page of Chrome, for a few users, there'll be an offer to join the pilot program. They will see it appear on their screens. They can click it, and if they're interested, they can apply for it, and we will ship them a Chrome notebook device. So that's one way to get it. Uh, we also ran, uh, on the Facebook fan page, we have over 4.3 million followers. We ran a promotion a couple days ago, announcing a sticker for your Chrome laptop. And there was a quiz. If you did that quiz, and you got selected, You'll get a sticker, but it turns out it'll be on an actual Chrome notebook being shipped to you right now. Oh, <laughs> nice. There is more. You can go to YouTube. You can go to YouTube, youtube.com slash Google Chrome and can submit a video as to why you would make an ideal candidate for this Chrome notebook. We are looking for people who understand what we are doing, can help us test and give feedback. So we'll be selecting users from there as well. For those of you in the audience, Hopefully, in the next few minutes, there should be an email in your inbox. And if you click that and give us an address, we will ship a Chrome notebook to everyone in this room as well. Ooh. <laughs> Only because I'm not in the audience. That would have been worth going from Boston for. Yeah, for right. everyone else, for those who are watching on the webcast, you can come to this URL, google.com slash Chrome notebook, and there is an application. There's a link there, which is apply for the pilot program. You can click there that will be and down apply shortly. for the pilot program. We it's have a limited number down. of devices, and we are re really looking to get, it to, the, Wait, get it to the right users. At this point, I want to invite a special guest on stage. Uh oh. Most of you know Eric. You, as a CEO you have to go in Chrome. That's why I've you worked can't with get Eric for over six years now. In all the meetings I've had with him, I have known him first and foremost as a computer scientist and a deep technologist who has pioneered a lot of the work in cloud computing we are talking about here. Every time we talk about, he wants to talk about the web platform, it where be, it is Andy? going, what the next set of evolutions are, 
And so I'm very excited to have him here to share a few start. words with us. <laughs> Thank you. Eric Thanks Schmidt. everybody. What a surprise. Um, my, con <laughs> my congratulations to Sundar, Linus, and the whole team. It's obviously an amazing, amazing set of product announcements. Um, we're really part of a journey of cloud computing. And this journey can be seen both in a historical context in terms of also what we think is going to happen in the next many decades, that cloud computing will sort of essentially define computing as we all, as we all know it. Um, I work at Google primarily because Google is one of the, a handful of companies that can do real computer science at scale and that we are able to actually build platforms of the kind of complexity that the simplicity that you've seen now can generate. In other words, these complex systems, when properly built, produce these extraordinarily elegant and simple solutions. Now, why is this so hard? Okay, well, I probably have as good a, a story as any. In 1983, uh, I was part of a team at Sun that was very proud to announce the 3M machines. The M's by were one megapixel, one megahertz, and one megabit, right? Do the math, guys. Uh, and as part of that, we introduced a diskless computer because disks in your client were such a problem. So this is not a new concept. Don't, don't be confused. There's not very, very few new ideas in computer science. The last really new one, by the way, was a public key encryption in 1975. Somehow we're always bringing them back because we want to come, either we love them or because they were right and we couldn't implement them. So why is this one so difficult? Well, we did that for a while. We had all the IT stuff and the web was invented. And the web is not really cloud computing. The web is really an information resource of enormous impact. We all understand what the web has done to society, to our industry, to all of us as individuals and we'll forever be grateful to Ber Tim Berners-Lee and the team that made that happen. And in fact, in the first cycle here in 1995, remember the Netscape IPO, uh, the Java announcement and all that, ultimately leading in 1997 to an announcement by Oracle uh, and myself and a whole bunch of other people who were heavily involved of a product called the Network Computer. Exactly what we're talking about today. Read the language. Use your favorite search engine and look at what I said. Right? So why did it fail? Right? Why should you believe us now? Well, we were right then and we were wrong then. We were right that the underlying problems that computing had evolved, the client server, the complexity, the costs, and so forth, really were a problem. Right? But we were wrong in understanding how complex and subtle the problems were. And of course, we were in the middle of the bubble, and God knows however else we were distracted, and so forth and so on. It was all sort of an amazing time. But when I think back hard, it was because we couldn't build great applications on the web technologies of the time. We could build information resources. You, know, you could read things and do things and so forth. But you couldn't build web applications that were at the scale and power of the then existing desktop applications. I'm not saying anything which at the crazy. Time were Olay I'm kind of a Win32 and various Mac APIs and so forth and so on. So what did it take? Well, first thing is it took time. Moore's Law is a factor of a thousand and fifteen years. Definitely so thirteen in, years in ago, fifteen stage, years ago though. versus today, yeah, sure. you have a thousand times faster networks, CPUs, screens, just literally more horsepower at the networking and disk level. The disks are that much faster, the network is more reliable and so forth and so on. There was a technology built in 2003-2004, which came, it was called asynchronous JavaScript and XML, abbreviated as AJAX, which built the first interesting web apps. Gmail, for example, was either the first or one of the early first AJAX applications. And all of a sudden, people said, you know, this web thing is actually kind of useful. I can write some pretty interesting applications. They can update themselves and so forth and so on. And then a, a general technology known, now known as LAMP, which stands for... We will be uh, bowing out for the Q&A session once Eric Schmidt finishes Python off so we can get to Mac Break piece. Weekly. Uh, if you um, want it to it follow the Q&A session, you can go to youtube.com slash Google so Chrome you to get the direct stream. And you had a back end that were powerful enough that a new programming model 
which is indeed what these things are built around. And Andy, if you want to cut him off, you just tell me. monolithic pieces of programs, <laughs> they would take well, snippets of code, objects, if you will, and they would aggregate them together. See if he's going in anywhere with this. Like Java and JavaScript, which sort of then came to dominate the middle period. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because it Thank took you. us all of this, all of this work to get to the point where a modern browser could emerge in the form of Chrome. Chrome, of course, now is huge success that we've had to look at it. was also interesting. Uh, when Larry and Sergey, of course, Larry and Sergey have always been ahead of me on these things when I first joined the company. Larry and Sergey absolutely wanted to be in the browser business and the operating system business, and I absolutely was not interested in being in, the, in, in either. And I said no. Uh, and I blocked very, very, I worked very, very hard. They sneakily hired a number of people who were very, very clever to work on the Firefox browser, which we helped fund through an advertising deal which has been amazingly successful and ultimately that core team ultimately was able to build this phenomenal browser called Chrome which finally broke through the architectural frameworks that people had with respect to security and speed which we've highlighted so now. We've gone to a, from a point where we, we had unreliable, sorry, reliable disks and unreliable networks to a world where we have reliable networks and the absence of a disk or an unreliable disk or we don't really care about the disk. Almost. Architecturally, that's a huge change for the way people think about applications. And what I like in particular about this is that you have a series now, you have this sort of the whole industry working on a set of platforms that set up, in my view, real success going forward. Let's review. The first is the adoption of HTML5. Let's not. I think we're going to wrap HTML5 it up there so we can hand it over to MacBreak Weekly. Once again, youtube.com slash Google Chrome if you want to uh, see the video. A uh, recap of what they've announced. Uh, they talked a, a little bit about Google Chrome, the browser. They announced the uh, Google Chrome Web Store available right now, chrome.google.com slash web store. Uh, payments will be integrated in the U.S. in Q1, but right now you can download stuff. Any WebKit browser that works with the CRX extension will be able to run it, they say, not just Chrome. And they spent, uh, probably the biggest announcement was Chrome OS. Uh, it will uh, come on devices made by Acer and Samsung with Intel processors, have 3G built in, 100 megabytes free data every month. Not much, but that's, you know, something to get you from Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi. And there's no contracts. You can buy daily plans. Uh, day passes are a little expensive at 10 bucks, but you can buy other things at, you know, gigabyte per gigabyte and just sort of a prepaid plan. Lots of security features, syncing features, so you can pick up any Chrome OS browser and get all of your apps and all of your data as long as you're connected uh, to the internet. And there's a way to get uh, what they're calling the CR48 netbook uh, in advance, several ways if you're in a business. Uh, consumers can can apply from a tab page in Chrome, Facebook fan page people might win one, and there's google.com slash Chrome notebook if you want to apply for one yourself. I suggest using it in the Chrome browser. doesn't seem to load as well in other browsers. Uh, Andy, uh, any other uh, thoughts before we wrap this up? Not really. Uh, the, the most encouraging thing of the entire announcement is the fact that they're going to... Uh, I was disappointed that they waited, that they decided to announce it so much before they can actually show off the real thing. Uh, but that was more than mitigated by the fact that they're going to put so many of these devices in the hands of real users uh, and learn from that experience. It really is a brand new way of using technology. It might fall flat on its face, but at least it won't be for lack of input from how people are going to really use this stuff. That's it for our breaking news coverage of the Google Chrome OS announcement brought to you by Slingbox, slingbox.com slash twit. I'm Tom Merritt. See you next time.